This segment is brought to you by GoToAssist. Here at DerbyCon 2012, I've got the pleasure of being joined by Matt Lichtenberg. Hey, how are you, man? I'm doing all right, Darren. So tell me about your project with the Arduino stuff. All right, so I have an older Android phone. And unfortunately, I've been suffering from the lack of all these new features that all the newer ones come with. Um, things like NFC, things like uh, the wireless N, those sort of things. But instead of just going out and buying a new phone, as I you thought, should. No, that's, that's what the good consumer does. Well, I'm an engineer. I'm nowhere near a good consumer. <laughs> but your phone's a year old. You have to upgrade. Cancel your contract. Quick. Pay the... That's, the, that's no reason to throw away the old no, phone. No, I'm joking. So I thought, well, how can I add the features to the phone? And so I started looking into Arduino. Because Arduino is like the Swiss Army knife of program programmatic logic controllers. Mm -hmm. And so I found a near-field communication shield that fits over top the Arduino board. And so my project involves actually linking that, that um, shield with the library built into the phone. See, Android's had those libraries since 2.3 Gingerbread. But unfortunately, even though the software's always been there, none of the phones of that era or before actually had the, the hardware support. Ah, so you're saying you want to augment the phone hardware-wise using an Arduino with the NFC shield and use the existing software that's on there for NFC. Exactly, kind of a pass-through mode, as it were. Okay, so how did you come about using Arduino for this? Uh, and did you look into some of the other uh, alternatives, like, uh, what is it, the, the IOIO or the YoYo? Mm -hmm. I, I did. Arduino just seemed like the easiest to get rolling with. There's actually a uh, Arduino fork called Mega ADK, and that's what this board's based off of, um, that supports rapid development with Android. Now, they want to kind of tie you into their framework. Uh, I think they call it handbag uh, for accessories. I see. But I, I kind of wanted to roll my own because NFC is not where I want to stop on this. Oh, I actually okay. want to move forward with this and start looking at other implementations that I can augment my phone with. Like what? Like what? You know, start dreaming out loud. The sky's the limit. You could, you could use an Ethernet controller. You could build a Wi-Fi in. You could even get monitor mode and injection going on it. Um, but really, it's just a matter of once you get one thing working, you can kind of jumpstart any other development you wanted off of that. So as far as the, uh, the NFC is concerned, what, um, what capabilities would this allow you to do as opposed to just, you know, say you, you did have the opportunity to just upgrade your phone to a new model with NFC built in, uh, what benefits do you have from doing it as an external kind of breakout thing using an Android or well, using um, Arduino? Arduino? The, the, the benefits come from the fact that I have base level access on the device, which means that I can actually read the raw data as it's coming off of the NFC chips. Granted that initially I'm just going to be passing it on to Android and let it deal with all of that minutia, but there's nothing saying I can't also run an, app, an Android application that logs all of that information and builds a table of features. Like, like an NFC sniffer. Yes, yes. Or, and then, you know, start working on the range. So what kind of fun Arduino, or not Arduino, it's fun NFC hacks have you been playing with with this? Um, really, it's just more been getting it working. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still fairly n initial into the project, but um, some of the hacks that I've seen, um, I don't know if you've seen the news, but Samsung recently had an issue with their phones. They, um, they found out that you can actually invoke the dialer app using NFC completely independently of any user authorization. Doesn't seem like that critical of an issue until you realize that you can send a USSD code into the dialer app. Okay, so what's a USSD code? A USSD code is kind of like the thing that you see when you're setting up call forwarding. You, you do like asterisk, seven sisk, seven six, asterisk, and then the number you're forwarding it to. There are manufacturer specific codes that allow you to invoke certain programmatic features that you wouldn't otherwise have access to. Uh -huh. One of them that was undocumented is for Samsung phones is factory reset. <laughs> well, I mean, that makes sense. So for them in the factory, mm -hmm. when they want to just, you know, they get a whole bunch of returns and they need to refurbish those units, they can just hold it up against the factory reset unit. Yep. Wonderful. But that means that I can also hold it up against my own 
you, factory reset unit. You could like hide this board under this table here, this coffee table. At and the anyone conference who sets, and it sets down, their phone down, and they're like, what the back hell? Up, no more phone calls. <laughs> now, you said in, in, the one that actually invokes the dialer, does it actually allow you to hit send? Or is it just pre-program a number in there? No, it actually will send it through. Oh, that's it's awesome. It's a completely passive bypass. So you ball. could have it dialing 900 numbers and all sorts of fun stuff. Theoretically, yeah. That's pretty cool. Or just using it to dial yourself. So Lindsay Lohan sets her phone down on the, the table, and, and then suddenly you've got you her number because she called you. And now you're listening in on the conversation because, anyway, sorry, just thinking, I'm At thinking call hacker forwarding. Style. You just set up a call forwarding on her number, that's, intercept all of her calls. That's crazy. Um, so what, what kind of uh, uh, steps have you made with this project and what kind of uh, issues have you run into? What, what's the, um, you know, uh, what's next with it that you have oh, to okay. tackle? So right now we've got the shield actually communicating with the board. Mm -hmm. So I can get it to talk between the Arduino board and the actual NFC chip, read data off of tags, what have you. The next step is actually bridging the connection to Android, and that's the more difficult step because Android by default doesn't have any concept of remotely talking over USB. Mm -hmm. USB by and large is just a charge port and uh, access to the uh, SD card. Mm -hmm. So the next step is actually writing a service, an Android service, to run as sort of a shim between the NFC libraries and what I can send out through the Arduino board. And that would require a rooted phone? Yes, initially at least. I mean, down the road maybe, I'd, I'd hope to come up with something, possibly. I really haven't investigated that that far. And is this something where uh, it's like a matter of using OTG, or, or do you have to write your own host mode drivers, or what? You can use OTG. Um, again, as I said, I'm trying to roll everything from scratch, not just as a learning experience, but also to afford me the most flexibility I can do. Mm -hmm. But initially, just get it working, then build from there. Cool. And so where can people follow the progress of your build and uh, if they've got some ideas, contribute to the project? Oh, absolutely. Um, so you can go to jousterl.com. Uh, that'll link to my personal blog off of my company page. And the most recent post contains a link to the GitHub. Great. Thanks so much, Matt. Really absolutely. appreciate it. Thanks for meeting with me, Darren. In IT, it's challenging enough when your team is all working in the same office, let alone when you're all supporting remote users remotely as remote is. That's that's the way that that works. And that's why you need GoToAssist by Citrix. You can take control of your entire IT environment with one simple cloud-based platform. And so with GoToAssist, you can keep track of all your systems, keep them up and running, and keep all of your users supported. You can provide live and unattended support from anywhere. Get this, they've even got an iPad app. So, dude, remote assistance from your iPad. How cool is that? And with GoToAssist monitoring, you get this customizable dashboard that displays all of the performance of your network, your servers, your desktop. So you can have like proactive alerts that say, hey dude, you're running out of space on the C drive on that NT4 server. Maybe it'll say you might want to upgrade your NT4 server. But otherwise, it's like, Take care of those little problems before they become a huge headache. Make yourself look like an IT hero. You know, I've been using GoToAssist uh, products for the last couple of years. And let me tell you, it has saved my bacon when I was doing systems administration work. I wouldn't want to do IT again without it. Uh, they're really easy to use. It sets up in just minutes and it's from Citrix, So, you know, it's like they're a trusted leader in IT. So go ahead and sign up today. They've got a special offer just for us. It's a free trial. Visit gotoassist.com. Click on the Try It Free button and use the promo code HACK5. That's go to assist.com with the promo code HAK5.